Welcome to the I Can Do Show. I created this program to help those who have permanent injuries, uh, disabilities, uh, chronic pain, or just really any issue that's limiting them from experiencing the full quality of life that they used to or that they want to have. I hope you find the material that I teach in this show helpful, useful for helping you to recapture the quality of life that and to empower you to have the control to live the life you want to live. Welcome to the 10th viewing of the I Can Do program. Bob will be helping me to demonstrate the exercises in this show and we will continue our focus on gratitude. Now let's get started with our workouts. For any of the open-handed or empty-handed techniques that we're going to learn throughout the show, what we're going to do is we're going to take the cane and we're going to either put it in our pocket, in our waistband, or if we're wearing a belt, we're going to hook it in the belt. The reason we do this is because if you're on the street and you're needing both hands to get into your car or whatever, and something happens, if you have your cane leaning up, say, against the car, and you fumble for it in an emergency because someone startled you, well, it's possibly going to hit the ground, and then you've got no cane. But if you have it in your pocket and something happens, you can get it out quickly. We're going to warm up our wrists. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bend the wrist down and straighten the arm. And as you can see, this is stretching the entire length of the forearm. You're going to hold this, breathe, relax until it be comfortable. Remember, with, when we're dealing with the wrist and the form, we're not going to push it too far past comfortable. Incremental progression is going to take us to where we're going to go. Now he's going to bend his arm, bring it up. He's going to localize the pressure in the base of the wrist. He's going to hold it there. Again, the idea here is to let gravity and some pressure do the job. Breathe deeply. Nice and relaxed. Now from here he's going to pivot his fingers towards his shoulders, applying the pressure, and now it takes the stretch into this portion of the forearm. One of the other things to note about these stretches is they actually help prepare the wrists for if you ever do end up doing wrist locks, like in some martial arts programs. Now he's going to change hands. All right, and again, the idea here is this is, this is a, a great warm-up for the entire under portion of the far, the soft white underbelly. Now he's going to bend the elbow, getting the wrist, breathing nice and deep. And now from here he's going to turn his fingers to his shoulder again, by rotating the wrist around. Now, we're not done with the wrist yet. From here, what Bob's gonna do is he's gonna relax his wrist for a second, he's gonna bend it the other direction. In yoga, they call this a contra stretch. All right, so he's gonna hold it here, putting some pressure in. Then he's gonna bring it up. Holding that. And then he's gonna rotate his fingers towards his shoulder, pressing down. change hands. It's important always to warm up your wrists before doing any of the cane technique. All right? If you don't, then you run the risk of getting tendonitis, tennis elbow, all right, and up to the shoulder, and shake it out. 
Remember, always warm up the wrists. Now moving on to my favorite forearm stretch, the single hand cane rotation. So what Bob's gonna do is grab it in a mid shaft grip. He's gonna support his forearm and then he's just going to initially go from palm up to palm down. So go ahead, palm up to palm down. He's gonna do this over and over again. The idea is we're, we're warming the wrist up in stages. First it's gonna be wrist, then forearm, and then entire arm for this process. Now from here, he's going to move his arm back behind the elbow. He's going to allow the bottom three fingers to loosen up and relax. He's not going full range of motion yet, but he's going further into it now as the muscles and the tendons are getting more loose, more limber. And then finally, he's gonna bring his hand back to his shoulder, and now he's gonna go full range of motion, really making sure that the three fingers are relaxed and focusing on keeping his ring with his thumb and index finger nice and strong. Now remember, in our system, the ring is very, very important. It's how we control the cane while maintaining and developing power. All right, now he's gonna change hands. He's gonna go back to starting with just underneath, or just past the elbow, palm up, palm down. Breathing nice, slow, and relaxed. From here, he's gonna go back to behind the elbow, going a little bit further. You notice how these fingers are nice and relaxed? Okay, so come on, try and stick your hand into a fan. And now he's gonna go full range of motion. And please remember, it is difficult to do exercises while laughing. And then he's gonna shake it out. And drop his cane. Now I'm gonna have Bob demonstrate the twist. I wanna point out right now, Bob is very purposely doing the twist incorrectly because I wanna make a point. Bob, please turn around and continue the twist. Now, you notice Bob, look at his spine. In fact, Bob stopped mid-twist. Now take a moment here. Let's look at how his spine is twisted. All right, this is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the spinal column. All right, go ahead and relax for a second. If you do this long term, what happens is that torque can cause you to, your back to spasm. You can hurt discs in your back. So the correct way to do the twist is raise the heel. So Bob's going to demonstrate. Ready, go. Now hold mid-twist. Okay. So you notice how the hip now is coming through. His spine is in a much, much straighter line, much less pressure on the spinal column. The back muscles are getting warmed up, they're getting strengthened and relaxed, but there is not the same kind of pressure and force on the spine. This is very important to remember. So Bob, turn forward please and continue twisting, like you did last summer. Remember, don't laugh during working out. So. And now Bob is working very hard to control his breathing, nice and relaxed. All right. And so you notice now his hip is coming all the way through, the heel is coming up off. This is going to be important later because what's going to happen, yes, he is trying to hit me, everyone. Just want to note this. You've seen it live here on TV. I just want you to understand that later on, this hip twisting action is going to help generate power in your swings with the cane or your the force behind your empty hand strikes. Okay, go ahead and shake it out, Bob. Now we're going to do the two-handed rotation. This helps to stretch out the shoulders. You're going to grab the cane as far as you can on either end, and you're going to twist like you're turning a wheel. The idea here is to try and bring your elbows to cross them and bring them to where they touch. So rotate to the point where they touch. All right, so Bob, go ahead. Now I'm actually gonna have Bob turn around while I explain a few things. The point of this exercise is one, to help stretch the back of the shoulders, all right? So the, the uh, posterior deltoid, but also this area 
here, which we associate as part of the shoulders and part of the back. Because the trapezes, they start on the upper portion of the shoulders, and then they come down to about the middle of the back. They're what makes us so we can pull our arms back and raise our arms. This is where most of us carry our stress. You go ahead and turn around. And this exercise will help to stretch out that area and relax it. So if you feel tight tension uh, or pain in this area, this stretch will help to relax it, help to reduce the pain in the area. All right, so if you work, also if you work hunched over a computer, I would recommend spending a little bit of time each day doing this as well. Now it's time to stretch our calves. So Bob is gonna to turn towards me. He's gonna step his lead leg back again. Once again, we're forming the tripod. This helps with balance. Now this time, unlike the hip flexor stretch, where the leg was bent and the hip was rocked forward, and the heel up, the leg is now straight, heel is on the ground. There is no pressure about pushing the hip forward. The idea is to get all of the stretch into the calf. Now, it's important to keep our calf stretched because one, they're the muscle we use the most. Whenever we walk, move our legs really in any way, shape, or form, for the most part, we are engaging our calves. They help us balance, they help us keep from slipping and falling. They help us walk, they help us run. So go ahead and change legs. Now this is a stretch that you don't just have to do while watching the TV. You can actually do this while standing in line. You can do this while waiting for the bus, waiting for a doctor's appointment. Anytime you want, because it doesn't take a whole lot of room. It's just using your cane, stepping back, legs straight, keep the pressure on the calf. You want to hold for about a minute each side. And go ahead and come up. The calf stretch. Now we're going to work on the round kick. This is defensive action. It, again, as with all of our kicks, I do not recommend trying to kick somebody above the belt because it's too easy for someone to catch the kick. For this kick, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be kicking with our shin or the top of our foot. I know you see in movies where they curl the toe backs, a lot of martial arts styles tend to curl the toes back and kick somebody with the round kick with the ball of the foot. Problem is with shoes on, it's not gonna happen. The shoes are gonna protect the top of your instep so you're not gonna have to worry about breaking the top of your instep. And if you hit them with the shin, well that's how Muay Thai fighters fight. And they've got, they're considered to have some of the best round kicks in the world. All right, it's a big area, hard to miss your opponent. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna assume the opponent is facing you. You're going to step and you're gonna sort of, instead of stepping forward, you're going to step and pre-turn this foot, the lead foot. Your cane is gonna help you balance, and what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna be bringing my leg up, almost like I'm doing a front kick, but in the last second, I'm gonna turn it over. All right, so I'm gonna step and kick. All right, step and kick. Step and kick. You can get a lot of power with that hip. It's all in the hips. It's not about how strong your legs are. It's just about the right turn of the hip, developing the power to hurt your opponent. So you're stepping, you're kicking, boom. All right, you wanna have control though. I don't wanna go kick and go, high and be on top of my opponent because then I'm rolling dice. More likely than not, they're going to be full of adrenaline and, and it's just all bad. Okay, so step, kick, control, and back. Step, kick, control, and back. From here, I can choose to follow up with the cane technique. Practice this first with your dominant leg once you're familiar with the technique, then switch to your other leg, okay? Remember though, the cane is helping you balance, all right? So step, kick. Ah. See, it's good target. <laughs> Let's go. I'm sorry, everybody. That was unexpected. 
<laughs> as you can see, it doesn't have to, have to kick very high to hit your opponent in an area that will distract them. So remember, step, kick. Step, kick. Okay? Turn the hip for maximum power. Practice this at home. Now in this segment, we're going to work on a, another open-handed technique. This one's the palm hill strike. We're going to be striking the opponent with the meaty, fleshy part of our palm. And what's going to happen is, Bob is going to target this area. It doesn't matter where you hit in this area, you're going to get your opponent's attention. You're going to hurt your opponent. All right, so Bob's going to go ahead and palm hill strike. You notice how he's putting his weight into it. All right. Now you can do it as a snap, like a jab, or you can do it as a weighted step through attack. Now you notice how I have Bob's fingers on the strike open. The reason for that is because, if you notice, so Bob, go ahead and put your hand back where it was. His fingers are right there in the opponent's eyes. Even though the pressure and the force is hitting Bob in the chin, Bob's also getting tagged in the eyes. Now, maybe not enough to hurt, but it's enough to distract even further. All right, so Bob's gonna continue, I'm gonna change hands, and palm hill strike. You can also do a palm hill strike to the chest like you see in the movies, but you would have to develop a really powerful palm hill strike for it to truly break the strike. The head is the best place to strike. So, it's really, it can be done as, kind of, as a counter tool, or as a punch, type of uh, a force or pushing kind of force to get your opponent to give you space and buy you time to maybe use a cane technique, fall for the cane technique. Right. The palm hill strike is a very effective open-handed technique. Right. Now remember, we learn open-handed techniques once you use in conjunction with the cane, but we also learn the empty-handed technique because we lose our cane. Now this is done, remember, we're hitting with the fleshy part of our palm. Alright, see, they lost this game. Okay, this is the palm hill strike. I want to take a moment to have an important conversation with you about the use of the cane as a self-defense implement. You're beginning to become uh, more comfortable with using the cane and moving it around. However, I want to remind you that a cane versus a gun, no matter how close the distance, the cane loses. Yes, this is a, a practice gun, but whether I'm at this distance or I'm five feet away, it doesn't matter. If the mugger has a gun, give them your purse, give them your wallet, because the odds are all, you're very much in your favor if you just give them the purse and go. If you try and resist, if you move in an aggressive way, you increase the risk of getting shot, not because they want to hurt you, but because they're so nervous and scared because they don't really want to hurt you. They're just, they're just as scared as you. Okay? Now, with a knife, it's similar but different. Because my arm, Stan, I'm, I'm a tall gentleman, and one arm is on me is approximately 36 inches. With a knife, I've gained myself maybe another six inches. With the cane, Bob's arm span here is probably about two and a half feet, plus another 32 inches, 34 inches, for his cane. Okay? So obviously, at the maximum distance of his swing, I'm not super close. So he has the advantage of reach. However, when adrenaline is pumping for you and for them, you have to ask yourself, are you going to be fast enough to reach them before they reach you? Because if you're not, if they're coming forward and you swing and you're slow, boom, okay? If, if he's going to attack me and I've got the knife, and he's swinging his cane as I'm coming forward. Okay? Right now he's thinking defensive. Right? And maybe that's, that's a way to go. 
the question you have to ask yourself is, if I just give them my wallet, will I get out of this safe? Or are they gonna hurt me anyways? Or also ask yourself, if I show confidence, if I show strength that I am willing to defend myself, and they have a knife, will I get out of this safe? The answer is yes, then go ahead. Protect yourself. If the answer is no, just, it's okay to give them your wallet. If it's a gun, 90, unless you feel they are definitely gonna pull the trigger no matter what, give them your wallet. Now we're gonna go over a combination. We're gonna do the fan block with the palm hill strike. The idea is if the punch or a knife strike is coming, I use the fan block to deflect away, possibly break my opponent's arm because this is a very powerful stick against their forearm, and then palm hill straight into the face. So it would be fan block, palm hill, fan block, palm hill. Put your weight into the action. Have your hand and foot land at the same time. So fan block, palm hill. Fan block, palm hill. Boom. And as I'm doing the fan block, I'm stepping to the side and I'm using that step, which is a little bit forward action for my strike. So it's fan block, palm hill. Just go in a circle of the fan block and strike. All right, it's a really good combination to practice. I would spend some time when you have free time just to practice the fan block. Okay, just getting the two in use. Continuing our focus on gratuity. Again, not the kind of tip that you would leave a waiter or a waitress or give to a taxi cab driver but more of looking for the things in our lives to be thankful for, doing this as a form of mindfulness. At the end of each day, before you go to bed, think back over your day and find the highlight of your day. What was the thing that you were most grateful for in happening that day? It doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be a, yay, I won the lottery. No, it's something, it can be something small like getting the smile of your daughter. You know, maybe you get that every day, but it's something that always makes you feel great. So at the end of your day, you think back, hmm, what was the highlight of my day? And then you say thank you for it. So I guess the example that I'd like to give uh, would be this morning when I woke up. My daughter came into my room, said good morning with a big old smile, and gave me a big hug. And of course, that makes me feel loved. And so for me, that's the highlight of my day. And so when I go to bed tonight, that's what I'm going to be saying thank you for. So each night, find a highlight of your day and say thank you for it. Now, in looking at the exercises we did today, you may find that some of them are easier for you than others. And so when you're thinking about your, the highlights of your day, maybe, maybe that could be one of the highlights. Maybe you're finding one of the blocks are getting easier, or the empty hand strikes are getting easier, or the warm-ups are getting easier. That could be one of the, the highlights. It's like, thank you for, for the, the, the stretch becoming so much easier. Thank you for the cane rotation becoming so much easier. Because it's through your dedication to practicing these activities that will make them become easier. And so that could be a highlight, is realizing how much you have grown during the time of watching these programs and working out with me each week. So tonight when you go to bed, Maybe that can be your highlight. And that can be what you're saying thank you for. And I'd like to take a moment to thank all of you for watching my show. I would also like to ask you all to like the Facebook page for the I Can Do. And email me or through Facebook, let me know what you like about the show and what I can do to improve it. I'm always looking to make the show better. 
with your help, we can actually maybe help more people out there. I can do!